religious, but let's pray anyway. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you for your awesome power, your delivering power, that you know all things and you orchestrate all things for your glory. And we thank you, Father, that you're in, the, in our midst, that you're working, that you're always present and active. And Father, we thank you that, that prayer, when we believe in you and trust in you and we call on your name to be our deliverer, to be our salvation, to be our healer, to be... Uh, to, to, to call out that resurrection life and power that you answer. And you answer in big ways and real ways to save young boys, to, to deliver young people, to deliver and, and set people free. And not just them, but everybody who believes and trusts in you. And so, Father, today, as we go to your word, we pray that we would believe what we hear according to your word. That we would, as, as we're going to read, we would take your word and your testimonies as an inheritance for us, that we would take them and we would say, that is mine. I, that has been given to me because I am a son of God. I am a child of the Most High. And he says, and so therefore I have. Amen. And so, Father, we pray today that we would believe that the word is your, is your word and it is truth. And we would receive it. And in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. So today I want to talk to you about the kingdom inheritance as sons. Praise God. And if you're a woman out there already, you're saying, well, this doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. Praise God. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, if you'll turn there, I'll give you a few seconds, that we're sons. And that doesn't negate the fact that you're a woman here on earth. But you know what? In the kingdom, we're all sons because sons is a place of authority. Amen? A son carries a certain authority in a, in a royal family or in a, in even in the ancient times, a son was the one who inherited, had an inheritance uh, in the family. Was, wasn't very often. There is a, an example in the Bible where some daughters got a part of the inheritance. But, you know, you need to see yourself not, um, this is not a gender thing, but you need to see yourself as a son this morning. Amen? Because sons are given things that daughters aren't given of. And, and it speaks to this in the Word and that, not to negate male and female, I'm not saying that. The Bible says we were they, he created the male and female. We all know my stance on that, so I'm not going to go down that road today. But if you don't know what it is, pay attention, read Genesis chapter 1, and you'll know my stance. Praise God. Romans 8 says in verse 14, For as many are, as, sorry, as, as, many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs and heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. Amen. So I want you to pull out a few things there because we're talking about an inheritance. You don't receive an inheritance unless you're a child of the one who's given the inheritance, okay? Unless they write you into their will, which really we've been written into the will of God, amen? But really we've been made heirs and co-heirs with Christ. So everything that belongs to Jesus, that's what this verse is saying, that if you are led by the Spirit, then you're a child of God, you become a son of God, and God looks at you and the same inheritance that Jesus receives in his kingdom, the kingdom of God is given to who? Us. Praise God. If you're a child of God, which means you put faith in him, by faith you, you've received uh, salvation and righteousness, and now you are being led by the Spirit. Praise God. That means that you're following after God. You're doing uh, your best to submit your will to his will, that his will may be done on earth as it is in heaven, that his kingdom would come, amen, and bring glory to himself. If you're doing that, then the Bible says you are a son of God, amen? So, you know, we say, well, what, I said the prayer, but are you being led by the Spirit of God? That's the key, praise God. Rain, go away in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into the mar his marvelous light. You who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The Bible saying that his inheritance is a royal priesthood. Praise God that in the kingdom, 
uh, I was thinking this morning that he didn't come to bring religion. He, be, he came to bring righteousness. And because righteousness is a, a key part of his kingdom, then we need to be royal priests. Praise God. We need to be part of this royal bloodline and we're priests to our God. Amen. That we're a holy nation. We're set apart to God. We're, we're not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. Amen. That's what that's saying. And so you can see that that he's called us to be sons, that he's called us to an inheritance, to be part of his family line, to be part of this royal line of, of children of God that are going to inherit something from the king. Praise God. The, 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 I don't know why they're doing that, but I think it must be school. My kids were studying like the British line of, what is it called? Royalty, right? And so they're always telling me all these things. Did you know that this person you know, did this and then they abdicated the throne. And I'm like, no, I didn't know that, but I'm glad you do. Praise God. But, you know, there's, there's a, there's a, in the royal family, you know, for the most part, the, the king, the kingship always passes down. If we look in the Bible from David to Solomon and then Solomon to his son, and, you know, there was some mixing up in there on the other side where they, you know, people came in and took the kingship. But for the, for the most part, God said, there will always, well, he said, there will always be uh, one of David's children on the throne. Praise God. And Jesus is going to sit on that throne ultimately in the end. Amen. So we need to be part of that royal line, that royal priesthood. In Revelation chapter 1 verses 4 to, four to 8, it says, uh, John to the seven churches which were in Asia, grace, and pe grace to you and peace from him who is and was and is to come. From the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So did you, hear, did you catch that? He made us to be kings and priests. So we're part of his kingdom. We're kings and priests in his kingdom. You need to understand this because in order for you to have an inheritance, you first have to be part of the bloodline. Amen? You know, somebody was saying, uh, uh, well, we had a testimony here a while ago that, you know, they had a hereditary sickness. You know, we talk about generational curses and all those other things. Well, th those things don't exist when you're a child of God because we only go back one generation Every one of us, and it's to Jesus, and Jesus doesn't have no curses, amen? He became the curse for us. He defeated the curse, which is death, because he was resurrected, amen? So we're not under a curse. We're under blessing, amen? We're in the royal priesthood, the royal family. I want you to get this, because if you don't see yourself as a child of God who's going to inherit an inheritance from him, then you're missing out, praise God. You need to be a child of God who's going to inherit something from him because he's wanting you to get to, wanting to give it to you, praise God. We talked about on Friday night about the kingdom God, language or the, the language of the kingdom is knowing, is understanding, is having wisdom. God's desire is for you to know. He's desiring you to know today that you have an inheritance in him and hopefully we're going to find out part of what that is, praise God. But you have to first see that you're a child of God if you're being led by the Spirit and that you have an inheritance coming to you. And it's a good inheritance. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 19, verses 1 to 6. I know I'm preaching fast here, but that's just what's going to happen. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out uh, of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to the wilderness of Sinai. Sinai. For they had departed from Rephidim, I think that's how you say that, and had come to the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, to the children of Israel, You have seen what the Egyptians, uh, uh, what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore... If you will indeed obey my voice and keep my commandments, then you shall be a special treasure to me. Hallelujah. To be to me above all the people, for the earth is mine. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you, which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Can you see that God desired to make a family line from the beginning? He said, be fruitful and multiply. He was always looking for a royal line to pass down his authority, his kingship, his priestlyhood. Uh, the Bible talks about Jesus was, was uh, from the order of Melchizedek. 
He was a priest, amen? He's not only a king, he's a priest, right? It said he made a sacrifice once and for all. He went into the temple of the Most High God, the Bible says, that was not created with, heaven, with human hands. He went into the, the temple in heaven and poured out his blood once and for all. Amen? You can see that he's a priest, right? Does he rule over all the earth? Is he coming back in power and might with an iron scepter? Yes, he's a king. Praise God. His desire from the beginning was to have kings and priests because everybody, everybody's got this. Amen? If you're a child of God, you're a king and a priest. Amen? A king represents God to the people, and a priest represents people to God. You get it? Awesome. So you're supposed to tell people, you're supposed to, we're supposed to represent as a king or, or an ambassador of the kingdom, we're supposed to represent the kingdom here on earth and enforce what heaven wants to enforce on earth, God's will. Praise God. We're supposed to enforce God's will on earth, and that brings glory to God. And then we're supposed to take people as a priest and take them to God. And tell them about God and tell them about his wonders and about his mighty saving power. So that every one of us has that same ministry of reconciling people to God. Isn't that what it is? So you get to be a priest. Are you getting this? Did anybody not understand this? Because if you don't understand, I can keep going. But I think you get it. Praise God. If you got it, say, I got it. Amen. One person got it. Praise God. <laughs> Proverbs 13.2 says, A good man leaves an inheritance... To his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. What does the Bible say to those who love God in the law? That he blesses them for gener a thousand generations, doesn't it? That's a pretty good blessing. He, he, he wants to leave an inheritance to a thousand generations. Amen? Thousands of thousands, which means basically there's no end to how much he wants to give an inheritance to you. Do you want to receive an inheritance from the Lord this morning more than you do from your earthly father? He's saying a good man. God's better than a good man. He's, he's a good father. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the father of lights. Praise God. He's a good father. So if a good man is supposed to bring an inheritance, what's a good God supposed to do? He's going to give us an inheritance. Praise God. I'm ready to receive his inheritance today. I hope you are too. Praise God. Hallelujah. Somehow I skipped ahead of my notes. But praise God. It's all good. The Bible says in Colossians 9, sorry, 1 9, for this reason we also, since we have heard of you, do not cease to pray for you and to ask you that you may be filled with the knowledge of his wisdom and spiritual understanding. If you were here on Friday night, you heard this scripture. That you may be, walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. See, God's desire is for you to know Him. If you highlight in your Bible, uh, highlight the fact that He wants to give you uh, spiritual wisdom and understanding and knowledge of His will. Praise God. We read on, on Friday night that He actually has revealed the mysteries of His will. And if you didn't hear it, you need to go back and listen to it because I'm not going to repeat it. Amen. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience, long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in the light. Praise God. He said that he is going to, let's read that again. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers in the inheritance. You've been qualified. If you put faith in Jesus Christ, if you believed in the, in the saving work, in the defeating work of Jesus Christ, that he defeated the power of the devil when he destroyed the power of sin and death over your life, and you've put your faith in that finished work, that he rose again from the cross, and the Bible says that you are saved, and you shall inherit eternal life, which means now you've been qualified to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints. I don't know about you, but that sends goosebumps up and down my spine because the Holy Ghost is just witnessing to me that I'm a partaker of an inheritance that nobody can take away from me because I'm part of a royal priesthood, a bloodline that promises to give me an inheritance. You don't have a promise of an inheritance from an earthly father because things can happen. You know, people can get in the way and they can manipulate it and whatever else. Nobody can manipulate God's inheritance today. You're going to receive it. Amen. If you'll stay a child of God being led by the Spirit, then you'll have what He says you'll have. You'll have what He says you'll have. We're going to read uh, from uh, Psalms here soon. 
And I got so excited when I saw this because I'm like, yes, amen. In Ephesians 1, 11 to 19, it says, In him we have obtained an inheritance. Say, I have, it, of the, uh, I have it, obtained an inheritance. Say that this morning. Hallelujah. Now say it like you mean it. Praise God. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to his counsel of his will, that he, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to be us, should be to praise of his glory, the praise of his glory. Let's slow down. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having been believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of the promise, who is the guarantee of the inheritance. There's a guarantee of your inheritance. It's called the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. It says those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And then it says later on that he gives his spirit to his sons. Amen. So in order to be a partaker of the inheritance of God, you first need to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Then you need to receive that spirit, which is the promise, praise God, that he said, I will send to you. It's better that I go that I might send the helper. I don't know about you, that gets me excited. He said it's better. It benefits me that he is not here. I find that hard to imagine because I wish if Jesus was here, he could preach a whole lot better than I could and there'd be a bigger crowd. But he said it's my benefit that he goes away, that the Holy Spirit might come. Why? Because he wants to make each one of us a little Jesus running around. Amen? Hallelujah. And he wants to pour out his power through us. That's part of the inheritance, people. That you get sealed with the Holy Spirit. That you have what he has. That you can walk in the power that he has. That you'll do the greater things that he did and greater things, or the things that he did and greater things. Amen? That's part of your inheritance. That's part of my inheritance this morning. Until the redemption of the purchased possession to, to the praise of his glory. Therefore I also... After I heard of your faith in Jesus, uh, in the Lord Jesus, and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Hallelujah. Paul prayed that those people would receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. If he prayed it, then we believe that he, as he prayed, he believed he would receive. Amen. So if he prayed that for them, and you read that this morning, receive that as part of your inheritance this morning, that you would receive the, 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 the knowledge of the wisdom, the revelation of, how is that word? It's all mixed up. That he would give to you, receive this this morning, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's part of your inheritance. If he prayed that over the saints back then, then it's for us today. Praise God. We're going to see that everything that's been declared over his people, his church, is part of our inheritance. Amen? The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what the hope of his calling is, what the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. Praise God. He... <laughs> If we could just understand that one thing, that part of your inheritance is that he has an exceeding greatness of power towards you because you believe. Amen. That's part of his inheritance. For those who don't believe, they don't know the exceeding greatness of his power, but you believe, which means you have the exceeding greatness of his power bestowed to you. It's given to you. Are we walking in it? Have we received it? Are we, are we displaying it for the world to see? You know, I was thinking about Elijah, and if you read that story, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. We're going to read that this morning too. You know that we're supposed to be humble. It also says we're supposed to be bold as lions. And Elijah was kind of bold because he was also kind of cheeky. I don't know how that goes with being meek and humble, but you know I like Elijah because sometimes it's nice to be cheeky. Amen? He said, where is your God? Is he in the bathroom? You know, we need to be able to display the power of God. And you know, we had testimonies of deliverance, of really salvation. He was dying. He could have been dead at the bottom of the lake. 
But God intervened. He put the right people there who knew what to do. He put the right person there to have his eye on the spot that didn't get distracted. You know, God's saying to us, don't get distracted today. Look at what I promise you. Look at what what your inheritance is. Don't get carried away with the cares of the world. Keep your eye on me. Amen. Don't lose the spot where I plucked you out, set out of the miry clay and set your feet on the rock, which is higher than I. Amen. That's what he's saying this morning. Every promise of God is part of your inheritance. The Bible says, For all the promises of God in Him, in Jesus, are yes. And in Jesus, they are amen. To the glory of God through us. Now He who established us with you is Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit of, uh, in, uh, in our hearts as a guarantee. Praise God. I love that we have a guarantee of our inheritance. The Bible says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to give you the, the, the spirit of God and I'm not going to take it away. Amen. That's your guarantee that you have a promise of an inheritance. The Bible says, we often quote this, the first part of the scripture, but not the second part. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you, you, in, against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. That word heritage heritage means inheritance. It means possession. It means uh, this is the possession or, or portion or property or inheritance of the Lord, of the saints, sorry. Praise God. So this is your inheritance that you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is your inheritance that every word that, or every person that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. No, that's not right. Because God said, that's how we respond. Somebody comes to you in judgment and says, well, I don't know about what you said. Deal with it. It's what God said. Right? I remember a guy came up to me last year and he said, I was listening to you preach. I, one thing you said I didn't agree with. I said, oh, well, what was it? And it was part of a scripture. I don't even remember what it was. I said, well, that's too bad. And he's like, why? And I was like, because that's God's word. It's not my word. I was just reading the Bible. So if you have a problem with it, take it up with him and good luck. Because he isn't going to turn back. Amen? And theirs is righteousness from me, says the Lord. That's the end of that. We've got to quote the whole thing. Right? No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me. Listen, you gotta stop praying that over your non believing family. That is not their promise. They're not servants. That's not their inheritance. It's your inheritance, but it's not theirs because they don't get it through you. They have to get righteous for themselves. Righteousness comes from me. It doesn't come from grandma. It doesn't come from mom. It doesn't come from dad. It comes from Jesus through faith in him. That is not their inheritance, even though it's your inheritance. I'm sorry to tell you that. I wish it was, but that's not the fact. The fact is this is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. Amen? Got real quiet in here. Maybe that's why it hasn't worked. He can't back up what he didn't say. Amen? He backs up his word. He confirms his word. Not what you want it to say. Not what I want it to say. Amen? Hallelujah. Got real quiet in here now. You know this part that it says uh, no no weapon formed against you shall prosper reminds me of Mark 16 18 that if they take up serpents and they drink any deadly thing it will by no means hurt them uh, Luke 10 19 where it certain says nothing by any means shall hurt you that that is part of your inheritance he was just repeating what he said in, in Isaiah 54, he was just he's reiterating it. If we catch it, that part of your inheritance today is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That doesn't mean, I always say this, that doesn't mean they won't come. It means they won't prosper against you if you'll stand on his word, trust in him, wait on him, rely on him, believe in him, and speak faith. Amen? You need to speak faith. Don't speak the problem. Speak the answer. I had my neck went out this week and I was like, oh man, my neck, my neck. 
I had to keep, keep catching myself and saying, I'm healed. Hallelujah. Praise God. I prayed once for it, and then I was tempted to pray again, and I said, you know what? No, I'm healed. I am healed. I don't have to pray anymore. I am healed. I was thinking about it, and I listened to a message today. He says, you know, we talk about dominion and authority and all these things in the kingdom. What's the one place that you have more authority in than any other place? What's the number one place that you have authority in? Your body. He didn't just come to save your spirit and your soul. He came to save the whole you. That's why he went to the whipping post. Amen? He didn't just come, well, you know, I'm here to save them from their sorrows and their griefs, but not anything else. No, it's all included. You have authority over your body. I have authority over my body. So when this pain started to come, I said, no. Get out. Get lost. Amen? Is it completely gone? No. But it doesn't change his word. It's getting better. Amen? They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Tough prayed with me, so I'm recovering. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to get children because they believe. Amen? They don't have fear and doubt. He said, well, you told me that God heals. He does. Get children to pray for you. Amen? Because they don't doubt what they pray. They believe that they'll receive the things they ask for when they pray. Amen? We need to get a childlike faith again. You have authority in your body. If you have pain that comes on your body, somebody should get up and testify. Then you tell it to leave. Come on, you need to testify. Come on. I'll tell it for you then. So my wife was telling me, she's so shy, anyway, that she had a headache. Come on. And she's like, I haven't had a headache for two decades. But she felt this pain come and it started to come to the front of her head. And she thought about it for a minute. She's like, oh, I'm going to have a headache. No, I'm not. I don't have headaches. Leave the same way that you came. And she said she felt, was that basically how it was? It came from the front and it said, went right back to where it came from and left. We have authority. We have dominion. We don't talk about dominion in this place and over the earth and all those things. You have dominion in your body. Amen? Speak to your body the word of God and, and, and let your authority be practiced there. I have more authority over my body than I do over yours. Amen? So we're always praying for other people to be healed. Maybe we should be partakers first. Amen? Amen? not to you saying you should that doesn't stop you from praying for people if they come to you and want prayer then they're giving you authority you have authority over every work of the devil anyway amen they're just coming to you but i'm saying you have authority in your own body don't forget that anyway nothing by any means shall harm you that's part of your inheritance this morning hallelujah Praise God. In 1 Peter 1, 3 to 9, it says, Blessed be the God of our Father Lord Je and of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an, in to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and does that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. There is going to be part of our inheritance we don't fully receive until we're in heaven. In fact, that's what that just said, right? It's been reserved for you. But listen, it's incorruptible, undefiled, and does not fade away. Praise God. Hallelujah. Doesn't the Bible say something about where moth can't eat it, right? And rust doesn't corrode it. Amen? We have an inheritance coming. An expected end we talked about last Sunday. Keep your eye on your inheritance. Keep your eye on the one who can give it to you. And he wants to give it to you. Praise God. In Psalm 61, it says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from my enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in your shelter, the shelter of your wings. 
For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Hallelujah. He has given us an inheritance of those who fear my name. If we continue to trust in him. Praise God. We're going to read another scripture here that again or so shortly. And we're going to tie all this together in our life that we're coming. I had a message the other day from a very well-meaning, believing you know, spirit-filled person that was saying, be careful, be ready, prepare, there's a storm coming. I know they mean well. I don't have to be careful. I don't have to worry. Be anxious for nothing, the Bible says. If a storm's coming, then my God will make a way through it because he is the shelter. He's carried me under His the shadow of his wings before and he'll do it again. Praise God. You need to have your mindset that his inheritance doesn't vanish when there's a famine. It doesn't vanish when things get short, when prices go up. God's inheritance is that he's going to keep you. It does not fade away. It is not affected by what happens in the world one iota because he is king and he will provide for his people. Amen. And if he wants to have a royal family, then he needs to look after them. Amen. I don't know if the, the royal family needs jobs, do they? They're like, I know they, they serve in the military, but do they need the money? Does the royal family have to pay for their flights when they go places? No. The kingdom pays for it. Amen? They're not worried about whether there's a shortage. The, the, the queen's table is not affected by a shortage. Neither is ours. If the king is my king, then I don't have to worry about a shortage. There, there may not be bread in the land, but there will be bread on the king's table. Amen? How often do kings suffer and die because of lack? Never. Amen? The Bible says something about, I was old and now, or I was young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Doesn't it say that? Amen? That's part of your inheritance. <clears throat> Psalms 119, starting at verse 5, it says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet, a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I'm afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, I pray, the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord. And teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. Can you hear the theme there? Righteousness. I have not taken my eyes off your law. Though my life is in my hand, I have not swayed away from your precepts. I'm still following after you. I'm still being led by the Spirit of God because I want to be counted as a son. I want to be a partaker of your inheritance. Amen. Your testimony or decrees or your law, I have taken as a heritage for me. Praise God. Listen to this verse a few things before. This is, this, this, I got all excited when I saw this. Praise God. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. I have taken your word, your decrees, as a heritage for me. This is telling you that whatever God said regarding his people, he said to you. Whatever the promises are that are yes and amen in Jesus, they're yours. Amen. You need to understand this because we're going, there may be times in the future when it doesn't look like that, but you have to trust God that he's going to provide. We can look at Jacob. We can look at Isaac. We can look at Abraham. Everywhere they went, God always provided. In fact, Abraham said when they went and got back Lot, you know, here, let, let, let us divide the spoil among us. He said, no, I don't even want to take a shoe strap for you. So you can't say you made me rich. Why? Because he was, wait, he was pro, pro, proclaiming and, and declaring and setting himself up so that God was the one who would prosper him. Because he knew he had an inheritance from the Lord. He had a promise from God that he would bless him among all the nations, that he would become a great nation. Well, you need money you need resources, you need land, you need everything to become a great nation. Amen? You don't become a great nation without land, without something to back it up. I mean, I don't know, probably not anymore because we just throw money around like it's fake because it pretty much is. But you used to have to have gold to back up money, right? 
You used to have to have resources to create a, a currency, but now we can just print it and it's like play money, right? It's not monopoly, but whatever. You know, in the in the real thing, it should have something that backs it up. So he, in order to make a great nation that was going to be its own kingdom, praise God, inside of a kingdom, there needed to be resources and God provided according to his word, according to his promise, according to his testimonies. And we can take that for a heritage for ourselves. It says... Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. That needs to be our decree. I, I, I don't know for sure. I need to keep studying. But he says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. And I said, I, think, I told my dad this week and one other person, I think the key ring is righteousness. Amen. It's all tied to righteousness. It's about righteousness. He said, your righteous judgments. He's talking about God's righteousness. We need to, I, I've declared, he said, I have said it. How do you word this? I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes. Why? So that I can always be righteous before you, that I may receive the inheritance. Easier for us now that we have the Holy Ghost to, to guide us and direct us and guide us into all truth and teach us all things and produce the fruit of, of righteousness, love, joy, peace, right? All those things. We have the Holy Spirit living within us, not upon us like he had. He lives within us. He'll never leave. Amen? Because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. So we can live that out much easier than him. Besides, death and sin have been defeated for us. That's your inheritance this morning. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. Sin shall no longer have dominion. You know, that's, the, that's the inheritance of the saints. That they have been delivered from one kingdom into the kingdom of his marvelous son. Amen. Into the kingdom of light. You are not that person that you used to be. You're a brand new person. So you don't have to do the things you used to do because you're not bent that way anymore. This Bible says that all things are of God. So now you're bent towards God. Come on, somebody. That's good news. I don't have to deal with the things I used to do before because I'm not that person anymore because I'm a brand new creation. Hallelujah. Bought and purchased with the blood of Christ. Much more precious than gold and silver. Amen. That's my inheritance. I don't care about gold and silver. I want redemption. I want the power over sin and death. Hallelujah. That's your inheritance. That you have been saved. Psalms 127. Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. So, or for so, who, uh, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Come on, sleep is your inheritance. The Bible says your sleep shall be sweet. If you're not sleeping sweet at night, then you're not for partaking in your, the fullness of your inheritance. Come on. Isn't that right? Sleep. Tell your body, sleep in Jesus' name. Amen? Because that's my inheritance. I take that as a te your testimony as an inheritance for me. We're not done. Verse 3 says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has a quiver full of them. And they shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Hallelujah. Praise God. Why are children an heritage from the Lord? Because he wants to increase his family line. Amen. Hallelujah. Be fruitful and multiply. If you read Psalms 128, it talks about the blessings of the Lord. And it talks about the children being around the table. Praise God. Amen. If you don't have real children, find spiritual ones. Make some disciples. He told the disciples. Amen. Some of them weren't married. Most of them weren't. I think only one was maybe. Maybe, right? Peter? Peter? He told them to make disciples. Why? So that they could have children around the table. Amen? 
Because he has a desire to, to, to leave an inheritance, a legacy, a destiny. Praise God for you and all those behind you. Praise God. <clears throat> Psalms 37, the title in my Bible is The Heritage of the Righteous and the Calamity of the Wicked, a Psalm of David. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut off like grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in him and be righteous. Amen. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. We ain't running away because things get bad. We're going to dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. When shortages come, if they come to everybody else, you're going to dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness because your trust is in the Lord. Amen. Your trust is in his word that he will be a refuge and a strong tower for you. His, your trust and your inheritance is that he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. His trust is that, that your, your inheritance is that he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I'll deliver them out of them all. That's where your inheritance is. If you'll trust him and do good, you'll have the things that he says. Amen? Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. He shall bring it to pass. Come on, that's good. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. Is that part? The earth is your inheritance. The Bible says that we will rule with him. Doesn't it say that? When Jesus comes back, the, the, the church will rule with him. Amen. I was listening to a message. I don't know about the doctrine of it, but he said, you know, there's going to be candle lighters, street sweepers, and rulers in the kingdom. In the thousand year reign, in the millennium, there's going to be street sweepers, there's going to be garbage collectors, there's going to be rulers, there's going to be town council, there's going to be every position that needs to be filled. Where do you want to be? What do you see the expected? What is God's expected end for you? Is it to be a street sweeper or is it to be a king and a priest? Amen? I don't want to get into heaven by the skin of my teeth and be like, he says, well, good, faithful servant. I think. I don't think he's going to say that. There will be none of that. You either are a faithful servant who decides to trust in the Lord and do good or you're not. Simple as that. Amen? For yet a little while, the more the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. The meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of his peace. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give it to you. The kingdom is righteousness, joy, or peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? They shall delight in his peace. You can have some of that now, amen? If the kingdom is, we're supposed to bring the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, then you can have that peace now. In every circumstance, if you trust in him, you will inherit the earth. Praise God. The wicked plots against the just and gnashes his teeth uh, at him. The Lord laughs at him, for he sees that his day coming. Wow. The wicked have drawn the sword and have bent their bow they cast, to cast down the poor and needy. To slay those who are upright of conduct. Their sword shall enter their own heart. And their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man has. Is better than the riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. But the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the upright. And their inheritance shall be forever. Amen. I'm going to let you read the rest of that psalm yourself. But it keeps on going on. Let's see what it says. Verse 22. For blessed by him... Uh, Shall uh, the, for those blessed by him shall inherit the earth. Verse 29 says, The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom and his tongue talks of justice. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord, verse 34 says, and keep his way and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. 
Praise God. Do you see a pattern? If you trust him, if you live out righteousness, if you work the works of righteousness, if you practice patience and, and, and live in his peace and his joy, praise God. Your, your dress makes me joyful. It makes me see that the joy of the Lord is upon you. Amen. But we need to walk in that. It should be affect how you wear, what you wear. You should be happy. Wear color. Amen. Praise God. No, we should. It should affect every area of your life. If you're full of joy and peace in the midst of turmoil because you have an inheritance from the Lord that the world can't see unless they really look and they're seeking after him, they will find it. Praise God. Or if somebody stands outside and yells it in a microphone, they'll figure it out. Praise God. But if, you know, they should see that there's something different about you because you know you have an inheritance from the Lord, that you have promises which are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And they'll come to you and say, what's different? I trust in God and his favor in his blessing in his promise and if you'll do the same you can have the same life and better amen isn't that it I wouldn't want to go somewhere where they didn't want me and what I what they had I didn't have access to there's countless stories of people bringing people to church or telling them you should come to church and then they're not able to show up with them and the person shows up and they're not accepted you know you don't belong here what are you doing here how is that a representation of what's been offered to them many of those I know one person in particular was saved you know God definitely touched this person's life taken to church the next day they weren't there when the person arrived and they were told to leave because of how they were dressed and how they smelled and they proceeded to steal everything out of the bus that ministered to them and left. They just needed to know that the inheritance was for them. Maybe they're at the beginning of their walk, but that's not the expected end. Somebody needs to open their eyes and see what God saw. See the expected end of that person is not to stay the way they came. If they're in church, they're there for a reason. And if it is to clean the building out, well then let them have it. Praise God, because my God's big enough to supply more. Amen. If that's the only reason why they're coming to church, let them come in anyway and let the word work in their heart. Praise God. The word will not return void, we heard on Wednesday night. It is how the kingdom advances. It's his word and his word only. Praise God. And that's what we need to trust in because that's where our inheritance comes from. It's by faith in him and his word. If you don't know him, if you don't know his word, you don't know him. He is his word. The word was in the beginning. The word became flesh. Amen? He is His Word. His inheritance is His Word. So take His Word and apply it to your life that you may have His inheritance. Amen? One person's receiving it. Take His Word, believe it, that you may receive your inheritance. It's just His Word. He doesn't go outside of His Word. He doesn't need to because His Word is good. And in it is life. And the truth sanctifies you. So he doesn't need to go outside of his word and give you some other word because he gave his word and it's good enough. It's not just good enough. It's excellent. It's exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think is what he said. Isn't that right? Praise God. Let's pray and I'll let you go. Hallelujah. This rag was a good idea. It kept the rain off and now it's keeping the sweat off. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for your inheritance. We thank you for your word, which is truth. We thank you that your word and the entirety of it is truth. We thank you that your word never fails. We thank you that your word goes forth and it always produces what you call it to do, that it never returns void, that it always accomplishes everything you set it out to do. We thank you that as we apply your word, which is your inheritance for us, that we will have the things we ask for when we pray according to your will. So Father, we pray today that the word would rise up in us, that your spirit, which you promised that you would send and seal us with, will teach us and guide us into all truth which is your word father we thank you that we'd be reminded of all the things that you've said in every circumstances that we can take every thought captive that comes against your kingdom that comes against your promise and we can stand in its face and say no your word says this this is my inheritance i take your testimony your decree your law your precepts and your promises 
as a, an inheritance for me. This will be my heritage. That everything that you said, I will have. Everything that you declared over me, I'll walk in. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that for every person in the sound of my voice. That faith would rise according to his word. That they would take the things that you've given them and walk in them. That the world might see that we serve a living God. A God who's more than able, he's willing. Praise God. And he's more than willing, he's able to do. Even to keep us from stumbling. That he didn't just give us a, a little pat on the back and a little spark to get us through the day. He defeated sin and death. He defeated every power of the enemy. He gave us authority over them all that we might walk in your kingdom power and your promise and in your inheritance to bring glory to your name. Let your name be glorified today in and through our lives. Let, a, let your name be glorified tomorrow. When we wake up in the morning and we speak of your goodness. When no one's listening and when they're listening. Father, let your name be glorified on Wednesday. When we come out of, the, out of our lives into, into this world. To bring glory to your name because we have an inheritance. It's eternal, but it's now. Amen. Praise God. Father, we pray for every person who's not a part of that inheritance today, in the sound of my voice and watching online, I pray right now that their hearts would be pricked by the power of the Holy Spirit who comes to his work is to convince us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Father, I pray today they would see all of those things and that they can have an inheritance in you that's better than they can imagine, exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or think. That it goes beyond because of the greatness of the power that you display towards those who are part of that inheritance. The inheritance of the saints. Father, that they might be included in this inheritance of the saints by putting faith in your son, Jesus Christ. Even now as I speak, Father, I pray against every lie of the devil that said that that can't be true. That there's no way that that is that's way too good to be true. Father, I come against every lying tongue. Every devil that's speaking into their ears saying that's not true. It is truth and the faith will rise according to your word. In Jesus name. Father we pray they would have enough faith. Enough courage to stand up and declare you as the Lord. Because the Bible says if we'll believe in our heart. That Jesus is the son of God and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord. He's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Not just over the universe but over my life. And over their life, if they'll declare that, you said that they shall be saved. And then they will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. The seal of your kingdom, that they might receive an inheritance from you. Father, we pray today that all of these things will be done in your name, according to your will. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. Amen. If you want prayer this morning, please come. We want to pray for you. If you made that decision today to follow Jesus... Tell us online, if you're watching online, if you did it, if you did it at home and you're not here, phone the church tomorrow and leave a message. Praise God or talk to Tracy. We want to send you some stuff to help disciple you and get you started to teach you about your inheritance and, and all the things that God's promised you that you can walk in the promise of God, that you can walk above every power of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Part of that inheritance this morning is healing. If you're here today and you need healing, speak to your body if you're a saint. Amen. You have authority over that place because he's given it to you as part of your inheritance. Amen. And healing is your inheritance. The Bible says healing is the children's bread. Amen. Yep. Believe right now. Lay your hand where it hurts if you have to. If your faith will allow you to do that, put it where it hurts. And if you don't want to put it there, put it on your head. Maybe if you've got four places that need healing, put it on top of your head and just say, I'm healed in Jesus' name. I receive my inheritance according to your word. Amen. I speak to your body now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you all for coming. We have one service outdoors here this week. It's tomorrow night. And then we're going to be going to the tent meeting. Len Lindstrom is going to be in town for a week. Those services, I think, are going to be at 7 o'clock at the exhibition grounds. Come and be blessed. Amen. God's going to heal people. I saw yesterday on his thing uh, post on Facebook that a woman of uh, stage 4 cancer, cancer, numerous tumors, one large one, uh, disappeared before their eyes. Amen. Praise God. So if you want to see... God's wonderful healing power come. Amen? Because he's going to display his power. He always does. Amen? 
Praise God. I want you to join me. I'll be there those from the 20th to the 24th, I believe, of the night. So I'll be there as much as I can, if not every night. Praise God. I want to invite everybody from the neighborhood who can hear me. Please come. You'll, you will not be disappointed. God is good. Amen. And the goodness of God draws men to repentance. Have a blessed Sunday. We'll see you here tomorrow night. Amen.